Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like I should say something other than hi guys, but what do you say? Hello everybody? Like, I don't know. But hi, welcome back. My name is Dana. If you're not already a subscriber, you're not already part of this wonderful sunscreen and skincare and other things sometimes channel, then welcome, join below. This is a fun place to be. I try to provide you with all of the sunscreen reviews that maybe you want. You don't want to buy something, so I try it out, I test it for you, and then let you know. You can see it applied to your face, my face, not your face. I talk through all the specs, kind of give you the details. It's not overly scientific, but we're also like comparing it against other things that I've tried. So, you know, hopefully this is a place for you. And if you do want to be here, like I said, consider subscribing. <laughs> all right, now that I'm done with my used car salesman pitch, I'm going to get into the video. So today, <laughs> oh my goodness, we have, this is, I don't want to know how much money this is. I could probably do the math pretty quickly. We have all of the sunscreens from Shiseido. I believe this is all. They may have a few older ones. I'm looking on their website now. They have like the limited edition one, which is like this one, but a limited edition. And then they have the sunscreen stick, which I do not have. It's the same as this, but in a sunscreen stick form. I don't really tend to reach for sunscreen sticks, so I haven't gone out of my way to buy it. But you know, I think otherwise I have them all. And they did have sunscreens before this, but I'm pretty sure they're phasing them out. So I'm just gonna cover the ones that are newer. And you can tell by the um, like shape of them. They're all this shape for the most part. And then they come in two sizes usually. At least for the more popular one, you'll have this size, which is the 1.6 float ounces or 50 milliliters. And then you have the massive one, which I forget how many ounces it is. So that's kind of the background, but I think we're just gonna jump in because I've got five of them to put on my face and we want to get through this in a timely manner. So everything will be timestamped below. All the links will be provided below if you're interested and let's just get into it. Okay, so the way that I'm breaking this down, by the way, hi, <laughs> we're zoomed in pretty close. Um, but the way that I am breaking this up today, first off, I'm gonna put these little clips in. Hopefully this is enough. The way that I am breaking it up today is I'm gonna be doing ones for drier skin and then ones for more oily skin. I think these are broken up pretty well in that fashion. And we do have two for the more oily skin and then three for the drier skin people. I tend to think of sunscreen like that because it really is, I think, best to kind of figure out your skin type and then figure out what type of sunscreen you need. For me, I have more normal skin, especially in the summertime, it will tend to be more oily. In the winter time, I can have a little bit drier skin, but I just don't tend to feel like I have super dry skin anymore. I used to back in the day. Also, as a side note, I do not blast my AC. I live in North Carolina where it is hot and humid and sticky and I have my AC set to, people are gonna be shocked at this probably, but 77 degrees, which is obviously Fahrenheit, pretty much all the time. I don't mind it because I don't like to be cold, but I also think this has helped my skin immensely. So if you can stomach it, and I know this for a lot of people, they're like, what? I have it at like 62, which to me, I would be frigid. <laughs> but if you can maybe like put your AC up a little, it'll save you money and it also will save your skin because AC just like sucks all the moisture out of your skin. So if you're always wondering why you have dry skin, that is a huge culprit. I notice it when I go into like a corporate office or like a coffee shop all day, my skin will be drier. So my skin can be dry, but I can mitigate it by not pumping the AC. And I also just don't like being freezing all the time. Okay, now that we've gotten through that, let's actually apply them to my face. So the first two are for your more oily skin people. This is the oil-free hyaluronic acid. That's the name of it. And this one is the oil-free mineral hyaluronic acid. But this one, the one that says it's mineral, it has titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. This one is a hybrid. So we have one that is mineral. I haven't looked through all of the ingredients, so I'm gonna look out for butyloctyl salicylate. But this one is supposed to be mineral, and then this one is supposed to be hybrid. They look exactly the same. It's very tricky because their names are not very easy. So I'm gonna do my best, but if I go like this, it's gonna look like all the others. So I will try my best to tell you which one is which. All right. 
So the first one that I am applying is the oil-free hyaluronic acid. This is our um, hybrid one, and I'm gonna be putting about an eighth of a teaspoon in here. And I do wanna show you just a little swatch because I think it's important to see kind of the color. So it's not quite white, but it isn't um, tinted really. Okay, so we have maybe a little bit less, but let's just do what we have. And I'm just gonna be applying it to my face and not my neck. So let's go. Okay, so starting with our Urban Environment Oil-Free Sunscreen, which is the hybrid. This is the SPF 42. It comes in three sizes, so you can get an even smaller one, which is 30 milliliters. You can get this size, which is 50, or you can get the massive one, which is 143 milliliters, which is pretty crazy. The one that I have retails for $50, so it's not cheap, but it is Shiseido, which is a more luxury brand. And what they say about this, they say it's a lightweight daily oil-free sunscreen that protects against harmful UV rays, hydrates skin, and doubles as a face primer. So as far as the ingredients, there's hyaluronic acid, which delivers, attracts, and retains moisture. We know about that. Spirulina energy essence converts sunlight to target factors that lead to dryness. Wow. It's oil resistant for 40 minutes. It's supposed to control oil, mattify skin, hydrate it. <laughs> It basically is telling you it does everything except for maybe folding your clothes. It's also, did I say water resistant for 40 minutes? I'm not sure. And as far as our filters in it, we have 10% enzulazole, 15% homosalate, 5% octosalate, and 15.5% zinc oxide. So those are some really heavy and high numbers for um, your UV filters, which is pretty crazy. You don't usually see, especially when they have all those other filters, I wouldn't normally see like 15.5% zinc oxide. There's a fragrance to it. Most of the Shiseido ones have a fragrance. It smells fine to me. It doesn't really irritate my eyes, but you know, some people don't want anything with fragrance. Also, there is alcohol in this one. Again, not a problem with me. Alcohol actually isn't bad because they usually put it in at such a small percentage and it makes it just a more elegant formula, but I do like to call out certain ingredients. Next up is the oil-free mineral hyaluronic acid. The, so this one is our mineral versus the hybrid. Okay, let's look at the swatches. So this one is the oil-free, the hybrid, and this is the mineral. So they look very similar in color and you can tell that this one's a little bit runnier. Okay, moving over to our Urban Environment Oil-Free Mineral Sunscreen, SPF 42. So this one retails for $38, which is, I don't know why it's so much cheaper. The other one was $50 for the 50 milliliter, but you might be able to find different prices, so don't quote me here. So they say that this is more than a sunscreen. The new Urban Environment Oil-Free Mineral Sunscreen 42 is sun-powered skincare. Our sun dual care technology infused with hyaluronic acid protects against UV rays and pollution and amplifies the power of the sunlight to boost hydration and soft matte skin. Oh my goodness. This is interesting. This is directly from their website about mineral sunscreen and white cast. Our mineral sunscreen contains titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which are naturally white in color and prevent sun damage by staying on the skin surface rather than being absorbed. I'm not gonna get into that now, but that's not really 100% true. For sunscreen that goes on completely clear, try these. So they are being, being very honest in saying that this one is going to have somewhat of a cast. And this one is also water resistant for 40 minutes which is amazing. And this one does not have butyl lactyl salicylate in it. So if you are picky about that or your skin is picky about it, then you can consider this one 100% mineral sunscreen. So let's talk about what it looks like and how, to, how it feels on my face before I get into the next portion of the video. Okay, so they both have a cast. <laughs> I'm looking a little like ghost-like. Now, to be fair, it looks worse with the lights than it does in my actual mirror especially this side, the hybrid side. I could probably leave the house without putting anything on over it. The mineral side, it's a little bit more cakey, or not cakey, that's the wrong word, casty. <laughs> but it's not terrible. I have definitely tried worse, and I didn't even mention what the percentages are. So for the mineral sunscreen, it's 4.9% titanium dioxide and 13.6% zinc oxide. So pretty high percentages, you're gonna expect somewhat of a cast. But as far as the finish goes for both of them, they do feel very, very light and fluid, 
you're not gonna be getting one of those creamy, thick, heavy zinc oxide type of sunscreens. They're very, they go on very fluidly and easily, like I just said, I'm just repeating myself now. This side, which is the hybrid side, definitely feels a bit more my speed. Like it feels like it's sunk in a little bit, it's dried down a little. This side, it doesn't feel that different, but there's something about it where it just feels like, I mean, it is a mineral sunscreen, so I guess partially it is sitting on my face. So I can kind of feel it just a tiny bit more, but it's really a negligible difference. I would say they both kind of feel very nice on your skin. They don't feel heavy. They would both be absolutely wonderful primers if you do have more oily skin. I think if you're using makeup over top, it's gonna look absolutely flawless. But if you have a lighter skin tone, you could probably get off with just wearing this and get off, get away with just wearing these and not have to cover it with makeup. But anyone with a deeper skin tone is probably going to need something a little bit more tinted over top. My skin tone on my face is more light, but my body is pretty much medium right now. In the summer, I get very tan. And so that's kind of what we're working with. Like right now, I would need to match my face to my body because the difference is pretty drastic. Now I'm just fanning myself off, but it is a little hot in here. So both of these, I love, love, love just the finish and the feel of them. But for me, it's not something I reach for every day. Even if I know I'm gonna be wearing makeup, I just, I don't know. I don't want to always have to cover a white cast. So I really think these I would recommend for people with very light um, skin tones or if you really are just looking for a makeup primer and you know you're gonna be wearing makeup every day, then wear, get them for that. But otherwise you're spending quite a bit of money just to cover it with makeup. So very, very nice, great for oily skin, dry down, or not dry down, but have like a, almost like a soft matte feel to it velvet matte feel that's the word and are really nice it's just about like preference do you prefer to be able to put something on throw up and walk out the door or do you need to cover it if there is a white cast so that is it for the oily skin i'm going to take it all off we're going to do the whole thing and we're going to try these three for our dry skin friends all right we're back my dry skin friends i have come to help you so i have these three we have the vita clear invisible protection vitamin c and then we have the fresh moisture hyaluronic acid and then we have ultimate sun protector so i've done videos on this one a few times you can search my channel for that i've also done one on the fresh moisture hyaluronic acid but i have not done one on this vita clear so we're going to talk about all of them it's going to be in one place so if you want to compare and contrast you can and we're going to just do it so let's go the first one i'm going to do is the new vita clear so this one is newer. I'm not gonna put it in here because it is so liquid that it's just gonna run all over. So I'm just gonna kind of do one finger length, but this one is one of the most liquidy and just very hard to work with if you're putting it into a teaspoon. It's also pretty much invisible. So there we go. And we're done. If you want ease of use, like you just want something to throw on your face very quickly, maybe out of all my sunscreens, it would be this one. This is very easy. It's like so easy a stone man could do it, bringing back those Geico commercials. All right, showing my age also. Next one we're gonna do is the Ultimate Sun Protector. This one is kind of almost out. I'm also just gonna use a generous amount on my finger um, just because um, these are so fluid that you kind of need that. Okay, so that one wasn't that much harder. <laughs> Again, these are very, very easy. And if you are looking for something invisible, these three are the ones. And then the last one I'm going to do on my forehead is the Fresh Moisture Hyaluronic Acid. Again, it's just easier if I do it on my finger for this purpose, but always remember a quarter teaspoon for your neck and face. So for the first one, the VitaClear. So this one is supposed to be a sunscreen and your vitamin C 
um, serum in one, which is pretty obvious from the name, Vita Clear Vitamin C <laughs> Protection. They're all SPF 42, I believe. The only one that isn't is the Ultimate Sun Protector, which is F SPF 50 plus. But this one is really gonna be your one and done vitamin C and sunscreen, which is a really nice thing. And I truly believe that if you don't like to have too many steps in your process, this would be a really valuable addition. It goes on just like a vitamin C serum and sunscreen in one. And I know that Shiseido has some of the best protection that we can get in America without actually like having to go to Japan. And their sunscreens are very good protection. So if you're looking for something like this, this would be a good option. So as far as vitamin C, this one has vitamin C ethyl. That's supposed to help improve brightness and reduce dark spots. As far as our active ingredients in this one, you have 2.3% avobenzone, 10% homosalate, 5% octosalate, and 5% octocrylene. So this is a pure chemical sunscreen, which actually all of the three that I'm reviewing for the dry skin people, these are all chemical sunscreens, so there's no mineral part in any of them. There's not even a mineral filter. Okay, so this one, I mean, they all kind of look a little bit oily on me. So I would say really, if you have normal skin or oily skin, these are gonna be a lot. <laughs> But if you have more dry skin, this could be good for you. It does sink in with the vitamin C one pretty quickly. If you use a lot, which I tend to do, it will sit on your skin more, but so do the other two, especially the cream one on the top. This is the um, fresh moisture one. They all do feel quite moisturizing. They're not gonna necessarily sink into your skin unless you do have drier skin or you live in a dry climate. I don't really feel a huge difference with them, but I do think that the vitamin C one, if you're using like a, a generous, but not overly generous amount, it does feel like it sinks in a little bit more. Whereas the fresh moisture hyaluronic acid and then the ultimate sun protector, those two kind of sit on my face a little bit more. That said, this one, the ultimate sun protector, you I've talked about many times. It's one of my absolute favorites, especially if you're doing any outdoor sports or just like being out in the sun and um, water a lot. It's really good with water, so you can just not have to worry about that as much. But it is a little bit heavier and it feels like it doesn't really sink into your skin. So that's what we have for the Vita Clear. Let's go on to the fresh moisture that's on my forehead. As far as our active ingredients in this, we have 2.3% avobenzone, 10% homosalate, 5% octosalate, and 5% octocrylene. So I'm now I'm curious because that is the exact same amount. You know what? All three have the exact same um, amount of active ingredients. So we're good there. They do say that they have 42%, whereas the um, Ultimate Sun Protector says it has 50 plus. So you can't always tell just from the active ingredient percentages. Sometimes there are SPF boosters in the ingredient list that can boost the sunscreen level up. But I would go with these being pretty good coverage. So if you're worried that one's 42 and not 50, I think you're probably getting pretty close to 50 coverage or protection. And the Vitaclear is also $38 for your 50 milliliters. I was mistaken with one of the others, the oil-free hyaluronic acid. That one is $38 for the 30 milliliter, which I have the 30 milliliter. These are not 50 milliliter, these are 30. So $38 is pretty standard for this size or all of all of their products, and but you can also get them in different sizes. Okay, we're moving on to the Urban Environment Fresh Moisture Sunscreen SPF 42. So this is a daily dewy sunscreen cream for your face. So this one is also water resistant for 40 minutes. These are all water resistant. I have to check on the VitaClear, but everything else is water resistant for 40 minutes. And this one is supposed to leave you with a dewy radiant finish. This is my forehead area. Yes and yes. It also has pearl light powder, which is supposed to reflect more red light and make uneven skin tone and dullness less visible. And then of course, hyaluronic acid, which it's in the name. <laughs> so for me, this one, I just don't reach for it. I really like something, especially all of their other kind of formulas where they're very fluid, very um, easy to work with. I'm not saying that this is hard to work with, but I just prefer that really fluid texture versus the cream. This one feels like kind of like a normal sunscreen to me. So I don't feel like it's as unique. And for $38, it's not the one that I would say like run out and get if you're looking for a dewy moisturizing sunscreen. It's perfectly fine. It just doesn't like, I don't know. It doesn't do it for me. The other ones, I just really enjoy the texture of them a lot more. And moving on to the star of the show. This one is always a favorite of mine. This is actually almost empty. It's, you can't see it because this one's not white, but this is the ultimate sun protector cream. I don't know why I say cream because it's not. SPF 50 plus. 
So this one is actually $40 for this size. This is our 50 milliliter, which is so interesting. Now I'm looking at it. Okay. This is 50 milliliters. It says on the back, this is 30 milliliters, 1.6 ounce, one ounce. Look at the size. They're almost exactly the same to the naked eye. This one is slightly bigger, but that's very interesting. So these, the 30 milliliter are $38. I'm losing my mind here. And this 50 milliliters is $40. So it's actually a pretty good deal. I mean, deal. Okay, so this one, what I love about it is as you saw, it has that kind of very similar to our oil-free ones and similar to the VitaClear, but kind of this unique texture to it. It's not a liquid, but it's not a cream. It's somewhere in between. It's this hybrid. I love it, like I said, because it really works well if you are in the water and like outside, especially in the summer. I've taken this to Florida. It's been really great in like hot, humid uh, Florida days, but your face is gonna have like a little bit of a glow to it. So even if you are out and about, like be prepared for this, unless you have the driest of dry skin. But I think this one out of all of them, I would say like for me, it's probably gonna be the one that I repurchase. It has heat force technology. There are a lot of innovations, I would say, in this one as opposed to some of the others. And I think that's what I was trying to get to with this um, fresh moisture hyaluronic acid. It just doesn't feel as innovative as some of their others. If I'm gonna go with more innovative sunscreens, I would use either the um, Ultimate Sun Protector or the Vita Clear. I find that they are a little bit more elegant in their formulas. Okay. That was a lot. I feel like it took a lot to distill the differences for these dry skin ones. I think it was pretty clear that I like the Ultimate Sun Protector and the VitaClear the best. This one to me, again, you could find a cheaper one. You could probably find like a K-Beauty one that is gonna do the same and give you a moisturized, dewy look. So for me, it's kind of a pass. The other two I think are really unique and, or maybe not unique, but they are elegant enough that I would consider repurchasing them. And this one, I wish I had a little bit drier skin to make this work, but as the lazy girl that I am, I do like a two for one, and I don't tend to use vitamin C as often as I should because it leaves me so, so dewy, and then I have to put a sunscreen on over it. So I'm like, well, I get the dew and the sunscreen in one from this, so I think this is a top pick for me. And then as always, I just kind of always go back to this. This is my second bottle. I had the big one before, I have this one now. I have a full length review on it so you can check that out. But I do think that this formula is just the most elegant. It checks all the boxes for me. It wears beautifully under any makeup. I can wear it completely alone. I can wear it out mowing the lawn or at the pool. I just don't have to think about it. So for that reason, this one is always one of my top picks. Now, if we're talking about the ones for oily skin, I definitely think the hybrid one, which is, Jesus, they look exactly the same. <laughs> This is the hybrid, doesn't matter to you, they look the same. I would pr pick the hybrid over the mineral. I just don't love pure mineral sunscreens and I would always usually pick like a tinted mineral sunscreen. So for that reason, I just don't go to it at all. But I do think as a hybrid sunscreen goes, this Shiseido one is consistently one of the top ones that I've reviewed. So if that's something you're interested in, it is a good option and it does feel a little bit less um, dewy and glowy as these. So if you're looking for a more velvet matte finish and you maybe don't have the deepest skin tone, I think this oil-free hyaluronic acid one could work for you. Whew, you guys, I am legitimately sweating. My inner elbow, as I call it, is like on fire sweating <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed this i hope it gave you some information maybe just seeing it applied to my face help but if you have any questions please leave them below and i will get to them as always and i will see you in the next one thanks guys